Hey guys, Radical Reggie and Metal Jesus, of course, and we're back at you with another awesome pickups video, man. Are you excited, man? Dude, I'm pumped, man. Yeah, I'm ready to go, man. Hey, fist bump. Ooh. Two. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah. A lot of exciting stuff that we want to show you guys. I'm so pumped up. I, I, I mean, I've been like just feeding to do this video with you, man, because I got a lot of cool pickups that I want to show you, man. I think you're going to be impressed with. Dude, I have a, a special edition console in this that I've been trying to find for years. I finally got it. I'm so excited. So. We're gonna show it. Let's get into it. Let's take a look. All right, dude, who goes first? You. Me? Yes. Okay, right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go big here right off the bat. So, Canon Dancer Osman. <laughs> yes. The so, unofficial Strider part too. Yes, so this is by Strictly <laughs> Limited Games and they put out an amazing mm -hmm. physical version of this. So, yeah. so I, it's my understanding that, that this game in its physical form, like in the arcades, mm -hmm. is one of the most collectible, hard to find arcades ever. I've never even seen it, man. Yeah. It was, it's pretty crazy. I saw a lot of arcades back in the day, and this is definitely one I didn't see, so I could see that how rare it was. It came out in like 1996, I think, when yeah. arcades were kind of like phasing out. At least, Probably for these type of games, I would say. Yeah. They were, our kids are more focused on like more of a dance, dance revolution oh, type sure, or sure. first fighting game type, you know, stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And so they're putting out, I believe this is the first time it's been released physically for a modern yes, system ever. Is. And so uh, Strictly Limited just went all out with this. It's got like a diorama in there. Dude, there's so much stuff about calendar, freaking yeah. like the soundtrack. Was it? They went all out, man. They and went all it, out. It's the like, perfect game to do it for. Yeah. It's cool, actually, that. Again, this is a game where I think most people are like, what? Well, I've never really heard that before. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's like, you know, mythical or something like that. Right. But they, it's for the collectors, man. Yeah, and the game is, is pretty much like, it plays like the original Strider game. You, and you could you could pretty much tell, you know, this yeah, is a Strider it, game yeah, when you play it. Has play the same it. feel. Uh, the same feel for it. Um, it it would have been nice to see if they had got the rights for Strider and this would have been Strider too. But still, the game is awesome on its own. I yeah. mean, they, they beautiful. Well it, it's a beautiful looking Huge game. Huge sprites on it. Yep. Yeah. Crazy bosses, um, yeah. crazy story. I mean, I know I go into story a lot, but this story yeah. is insane. But it's, it's it's a really it's it's like I mean arcades are like arcade games. They're pretty much like a fine art, and get them as a, getting them as a physical release is just fantastic. So yeah, I don't think I, anybody saw this coming, right. and so it's cool to have it on a physical, and especially this big box, packed full of stuff in there. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. So. Right on, man. Okay. Yep. Uh, I gotta start out big as well, man. But uh, okay, I haven't seen neither of us have seen what, what each other are bringing, so. So this is the Tales of Destiny Director's Cut Collector's Edition for PS2. Huh, okay. Is this a Japanese release or something? Looks no, like it. it is a custom release. Oh, um, okay. By Project Retro Games. Um, they're they're making, I think they're making 30 of those. And I got one, man. And I, I took the system out of the box because it's kind of tough to get out of there sometimes. But this oh. is the system itself, brother. So this system plays modded games pretty much. So there's wow. a lot of man, English translated games that are coming out. And uh, he's putting them in a physical format. So this system... Dude, a custom memory card. He made a custom memory card for it as well. Controller wow. and all that stuff. And it pretty much, you could play those games on this system. Um, he he uh, hard, like he changed the wiring inside. Like I, like I forgot what he did exactly. Okay. But it plays modded games pretty much. So you can put huh. a game in there, it plays them. Which is great. Dude. Don't want to do, do with it. This is beautiful. With the, with Look the at e -boot that. stuff. Wow. So you've had a couple of these now where, where these are kind of like fan-made... It's yeah, that's, a, that's, that's the second one. Um, okay, because you, you, know, you did one for PS One. That's right, PS One. That's right. Yeah, Tales of Fantasia. So, yeah, I'm just happy to have that man. Wow. It's, it's freaking awesome. Yeah, he's making that stuff. <laughs> well, the know. box looks legit. That's, I thought it was real. Dude, like, or, he, well, know. I know he goes all out. Yeah. Man, he's very dedicated to making like like stuff that's really authentic to the, what what originally would have came out if companies had made it. Even so. even on the back. Even on the back. Yes, the numbering. Yes, he's serious business, man. So wow. yeah. Pumped up to have that. So, and it's that nice to cool. play a lot of these games that weren't English translated um, yeah. in English now because a lot of modders are making transla fan translations are coming out and he's putting them in physical format, put it on your system, on your television. Fantastic. So. If, the, if the game publisher won't do it, then fans will. That's right. That's how <laughs> That's right. Exactly. All right. Well, cool. Well, next up for me is uh, I don't know if you've seen this. So, Batsugun. Yeah. This is like okay. a, uh, this is a Saturn tribute version of this. So, basically, this is. Batsugan, I, I believe that's how you say it, is considered the world's first bullet hell shooter. Really? So, yeah, it's considered the first. And so this is kind of like a loving tribute to that game. And if you don't know, like, 
I'm, I'm sure most people know what a bullet hell shooter is, but basically it's, it's almost like it's one of the first times where the the bullets just kind of went everywhere and so mm -hmm. you know before this the, you, an enemy would shoot at you mm -hmm. and this is where basically for whatever reason they were like hey what what would happen if the enemies just fill the screen with bullets and you yeah. try to survive right and so it's pretty it's, a, it's intense action it I'll is and it's not for everybody the one thing i will say though which what i really like about this version is that at any time you can go into slow mode Mm, and nice. it doesn't affect it, it. It doesn't. I don't believe it affects your score. But you know, when the screen is full of bullets, you can push in. I believe on the thumbstick, and suddenly it goes half speed. Right. And so you can survive. You don't have to do it, but it's an option. So this is a good modern release because this game originally only came out on Saturn. Yeah, and yeah. It's very expensive. So yeah, and th there's a. I forget. What the, it, the, basically, it's like a boosted special edition of the game. It has you know different versions of it on here. Mm -hmm. So if you want to play it like the actual arcade, I believe it's an arcade game first. Right. Saturn. Um, yeah, so I was very happy to get that this. cover. Looks awesome. I love how Doesn't it, it? the artist on the cover. That's and cool. what do they call these little slips for the Saturn? I don't know what they call that. Um, I just thought of the name and it slipped my mind. Uh, yeah, but it's cool that they included that as well on here yeah. as a tribute to the Saturn. The Japanese oh. Saturns would have that. So yeah, Batsugan. I, well, I got something very similar to that. Let oh, you do? I, I okay. do. I do. I think I have it here somewhere. We actually talked about this game before. Oh. This is Akai Katana. Oh, dude, that's yeah. cool. I didn't know this came out in this. And it has, of course, it has that the same slipper as well. Yeah, but, um, oh. yeah, yeah. This, I, you, you know how I feel about that game. This game is awesome. Oh yeah, they, yeah. This is this game. I, I, I believe I do have the the regular Switch version mm -hmm. of this. I think yep. I got it from Play Asia or something like that. But, yeah, my, yeah, my buddy Kyle hooked me up with that man. He had an huh. extra copy. He sent it my way, so I'm really pumped up. I mean, man. Cave make some of the best shooters. We've mentioned that before. I mean, they are, in my opinion, they are my favorite shooters. Yeah. There's just something about the feel of them. Mm -hmm. the, also, they're usually pretty whimsical. Right. You know, they're kind of over the top sometimes. But yeah, well, you knew they were special when you played that game, Dudon Patchy. Uh, that game was oh, like dude. yeah. Also, uh, Death Smiles is really Death great. Death Smiles, that's another yeah. one. Yeah. They, they, they have tons of them. Huh, that's cool. It's yeah. like a companion piece to mine. So okay. there you go. <laughs> uh, okay. Next up is something a little bit different here. So I was sent this book. Uh, called Supercade, a mm. visual history of video games age uh, basically 1985 to 2001. And essentially what this is, it's a visual history of video games. And as you can see here, it's gorgeous. Wow, and dude. you know, the, the truth is there's a lot of these kind of, of books already on the market. Mm -hmm. This one, what I like about this is it's not specific to just consoles. Oh my God. It's, <laughs> it's, Arcade games, computer games, mm -hmm. consoles, handhelds, it's everything. So it's really cool. With their design, too. Look at this WWF Superstars. Like that's how they are that's how I remember the arcade being, just right. like that. Yeah, it's really interesting because sometimes they'll use kind of like uh, gameplay footage, sometimes they'll use some of the side art that would be on an arcade machine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'd use the marketing advertisements for some of the 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 pictures in here. Yeah. Beautiful book. I really like this book quite a bit. So I actually read almost all of it. So I'm still looking at this WF Superstar, seeing all the old school wrestlers. I used to love Andre the Giant. Golly, what an oh, intimidating wrestler. Yeah, totally. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really cool, if you're looking for like a, you know, a, a coffee table book. You yeah, know, something. definitely. Uh -huh. Th these are the type of things, honestly, like when we have a party at my house, and you can kind of attest to this, like on my bar, I'll have like either a magazine or a book like this on there, just for people to kind of flip through. And it always gets looked at, always. Right on. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Cool, man. Yeah, so I, I, I dig this a lot. Now, my buddy John doesn't like this game, but I love it actually. And this is Wanted Dead. Huh. Um, so Wanted Dead is an action is an action pretty much a crazy action game where um, you play at these. Um, I want to say they're kind of like um, like a SWAT team type uh, like type cops, and they're going after like like certain like uh, villains and everything like that. But the thing about this game is that it really reminds me of a high end PS3 game. It does it definitely doesn't push hmm. the limits of today's games, but um, it's very action oriented and action is all over the place so it's kind of hit or miss with some people i'm still in the beginning stages of it but i feel like um i got killed a lot in the beginning but i feel like i'm gonna have to put the game on easy mode so <laughs> the game kind of messes with you too when you play on easy mode they give you these cat ears oh you know, really the the like, yeah, it's, like it's like hilarious make fun of you huh? but you know i just want to kind of get through it and like get a feel for it then I'll maybe i'll play on normal and get further in the game but I, like a lot of well my buddy john tries to like talk crap about the game but john forget you this game is awesome i don't care what you say um i've never heard of this and right. here's a copy for you 
Oh, so re you, oh, really? Can, yeah. So when I was you're there, gonna give me the PS5 version. You yeah, don't want the PS5 it? version. Yeah. Okay. Cause, well, cause, cause, yeah, they have the collector's you got the, Well, I got yeah. the upgrade. You know, uh, PS5. Yeah, yeah. I'm good to go. <laughs> so try it out, man. This has Let a better cover too. <laughs> it does. At least that cover. Yeah, it's got the characters huh. in the cover and everything. But yeah, okay, try it out later. Well, okay. Let me know what you think, man. So well. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, okay. Well, then I'm gonna give you a gift. No. So, so. We, you and I have been using Play Asia for years, mm -hmm. and and they reached out to me and they're like, "Hey, we love your pickups videos. Uh, you know, we want to send you a couple games. Give some to Reggie." And I was like, "Okay, all right." So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I so I picked a couple that I thought you might be interested in. Okay, okay. First one here. So these are all for you. Smashing the Battle Ghost Soul. Have you heard of this no. game? No. So it's a 3D. Uh, brawler, mm -hmm. but you play this kind of sexy lady in a, in right. a like a mech suit or something like that. Okay, it's supposed to be kind of silly and cheesy, and it's right. not too deep. Here's another one, The Letter, oh, wow. which is a visual novel. Uh, I actually did play and I captured the footage for this. It's pretty interesting, actually. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And it does something which I love. It auto uh, it auto progresses the text. Oh, so you, you see right? Okay, good. Yes. So, so and you can control the speed of it. So I was actually enjoying that quite a bit. I like the cover. And then I picked this one for you because I, I I don't know. I just thought it was funny. Dude, Life Quest. You know what's funny? I missed out on this one too. Which oh really? Is I did. Yeah, they sold out. So it's, I don't know awesome. anything about it. They haven't even opened it yet. But I was like, Reggie's getting Life Quest. <laughs> right on, man. Yeah, this is a cool platform. Yeah. Oh, this, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, there awesome. you go. Right on. Thank you, man. Gift for you. Thank you, Play Asia as well. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It was cool that they did that. So. Um, let me go ahead and give this gift to you too. So, uh, from, okay. um, Project Retro Games, um, they know that you're a big fan of Phantasmagoria. Whoa, whoa, for the Saturn. This is the uncut version for Saturn. What the and, uh, hell yeah, is Yeah, it's this? like eight discs, man. So, um... <laughs> whoa! <laughs> it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty intense, man. Actually, I actually opened it up right there for you because the, the plastic was on pretty tight, but, uh, yeah. Holy crap. Like, so, first of all, this never came out for Saturn, so it was a PC only game. It came out for Saturn in Japan. It did. It did. I believe I didn't so. Know Maybe that. Oh, okay. Guys in the comments, Maybe let me know if I'm right. right. I have no but, idea. But yeah, he they English translated it, and um, there's some uncut scenes in this version Holy of the game. Holy crap! So, dude, yeah. this is amazing. <laughs> I had no idea. This is probably the coolest thing in my yeah. Sierra collection right He's now. He's working on so many cool projects huh. like that, man. So yeah, he wanted you to have that. So. Wow, I didn't realize it came out on Saturn. That is amazing. So, well, there's a lot, there's a, quite a few PC games that came out on Saturn in that's, Japan. That's true. Yeah, yeah that, that is true. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. Okay, okay. thank you. That's awesome. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right, next up from uh, is it? Yeah, back to video. Oh, okay. You're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, game I picked up, I was I was really excited about. That is Star Wars Jedi Survivor for the PlayStation 5. Okay. So, this is a sequel. It is a 3D Jedi platforming game. Um, you know, a sequel to a really popular Star Wars game that came out mm -hmm. probably like four years ago or something like that. Beautiful. You basically play as a Jedi. Uh, it's an epic story. Uh, lots of, you know, awesome kind of set pieces in it. I played and beat it. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would say, though, that, and no spoilers, and it'd be interesting to hear from people down in the comments, I did see the twist coming from a mile away mm -hmm. in the story. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil it. because you're an expert, man. I mean, you... When you're in the lore like this, you kind of expect, you kind of get That's this, like, true. Yeah, until That's like, true. Oh. Well, especially, again, I can't talk too much about it, but you know, sometimes whenever there there's a character and you're like, oh, that person's totally bad or what, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, but, so anyways, uh, that said, I really, really enjoyed this game. It was really fun. Okay. Yeah. Right it's very much kind of like a Souls-like game where it's so, all about combat, different stances, blocking, things like that. It says internet required, so why is that, is, this, is it like you had... Did they have to know you're online, or is this? That's like, really interesting. I didn't. It's a single player game. Because so, that kind of reminds me of Back for Blood. Like that game, you could play single player too. Yeah. But it, it required an online connection, which was okay. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I didn't notice that, and it yeah. didn't affect my game. Of course, I'm usually always online because I'm home. Right. But it's interesting you say that because if I was playing on PC on my Steam Deck mm -hmm. and I was on a plane, I might not be able to play it, which is really stupid because it is a single player game. Right. I have right. no idea. Okay. Hmm. Your eagle eye. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, stuff. looking out for that sort of stuff. Okay, um, so this is going to be a weird one, but Resident Evil on the NES. So Whoa. We're, we're taking it back. So you got Resident Evil, Resident Evil on NES. I, um, a guy reached out to me and said, hey, Reggie, I, I know you would probably want one of these, so um, he huh. made one for me. It was really cool of him. 
And um, yeah, it's a, a, a game, a Resident Evil game made for the Nintendo, which is shocking to me. Yeah. And um, it even comes in a red cart. Yeah, which that's is cool pretty looking. cool. You know, uh, I'm not that far in the game, but the game is kind of like, obviously it's dumbed down from the original games, but you get to play, this version you only get to play as Jill. And most people only pick Jill anyways, because it's, her game is plays better, of course, with the item. Uh, items you could carry. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I just pick the the female character because I know I'm going to be seeing her from behind oh, the gotcha. whole time. <laughs> it's like if, if I'm be playing a game and I have to look <laughs> for 30 hours, I'm going to pick the You're girl. Pick yeah. the girl. Gotcha, man. <laughs> so yeah, this is a unique release. You know, it's just like uh, I love what people are doing with this type of stuff. You know, and it shows that these yeah. old legacy systems will live forever because people will make projects like this. Happen. So I'm noticing that lately you've been buying more of these kind of like they're not D makes, but they're kind of like uh, you know, yeah, kind of like people fans bringing. Yeah. These games, you know, too. I mean, I guess you've kind of always done that, but I definitely notice you're you're into it more for oh, sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're when you kind of like you've been collecting for years, you got to yeah. look out for other stuff that's kind of interesting yeah. stuff, exactly. different stuff. So yeah, Resident Evil on the NES. All right. Uh, next up for me is another PS5 game. This was one uh, that I didn't expect to come out, but it's by Limited Run, mm. and I picked this one up. Lately, we haven't been picking up a lot of Limited Run games because we just want to pick up what we want, right? right. You know. I wanted this really badly. So the Shadowrun Trilogy, these are newer games that are, I think they originally came out like on the iPad or something like that, but basically they're old school computer RPGs, like mm -hmm. top down. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're very dialogue driven. The, the combat is turn-based. Fantastic games, like like cyberpunk kind of kind of games. Right on. Um, and to get a physical version of it again, and all three games was really cool. So I was happy to get this. And, right on. And I love these games because there's a lot of uh, humor to them. Mm. Really deep characters. The stories are really interesting. Like the first game, it starts off with a murder you're trying mm -hmm. to solve. So yeah, this is cool. Right on, man. All right, next game here uh, had a name change. Um, and I thought it was a game more of a Castlevania type, uh, more of an old school Castlevania, but you could call it maybe a Metroidvania. I don't okay. you know. You guys will decide in the comments. But this is Gal Guardians, uh, also known, used to be known as uh, Grim Guardians, I believe. Hmm. So Metroidvania, Castlevania type game, uh, 2D sprites, of course, um, made by Indie Crates, which is a, a, a studio I follow a lot. They made like the Azure Striker Gunvolt games. Oh, okay. Um, and a couple of other other of my favorites as well, but I had to pick that up, man, because uh, you know physical release for those type of games, these type of games, I yeah. just feel like it is a must to have. And the game's actually a lot of fun. It, it, you get to switch between two characters, and the one has a gun, one has like more melee attacks, and the girl with the gun, you, she had to reload her guns and stuff like that. So it kind of you know. This is from the Gal Gun series. That's what they're saying. Characters. Is that what they're saying? Also, oh, this is a spinoff of the Galgun series. The Galgun series. The, the, the shoot 'em up one, right? Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's like they kind of it's like they call it kinky or whatever they right, call it. Right, right. It's really like PG, but okay. Interesting. Huh. Okay, man. There you go. So okay. And I'm having fun with the game. It's, it's pretty unique. Cool boss battles. Good music. You know, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm I'm, I'm around the fourth like area. I would say it's like the underground area. That's where I last left off at. So uh, I got kind of stuck there. Got knocked in the water and characters got killed. But still, I was having fun with this game. So. I would love to know what you guys think about this one in the comments if you played it. All right, that's yeah. cool. All right, guys, we want to give a quick little shout out to the sponsor of this video. Yep. I've worked with them in the past, and they are an excellent sponsor, and that is CLZ Games. That's an app. You've heard of it, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's basically the app that I use on my phone to look up the prices of things, but also yep. I use it to catalog my entire game collection. Yeah, and, and they're really up to date and current, so it's very helpful. They are, and so basically all you have to do is just basically scan the barcode and it brings up you know all these price options. Mm -hmm. One thing that they added recently that I really like is the ability to sort. So for instance, if you go into your Switch games, you can sort by the um, the category of game it is so mm -hmm. like you can very quickly go in there and see which are the first person shooters which are the platforming oh. games so if you have a large collection like me and just looking for like what you know what do I play tonight you know right it, right right it's on. actually pretty cool and also it's got other options in there like you can track whether you've completed it or not so that's good it is really or how cool. much you paid for a game too how much you paid but also like if it's gone up in value or down in value stuff like that so you know it's stuff that collectors like us care about oh definitely yeah and i've been i've been paying for my own subscription for it for several years now it's only 15 bucks a year so i want to give a huge shout out to clz games check it out on the android store and also the app store or the apple app store yep. so i want to thank them for sponsoring this right on next up here is a game i talk about on my channel dude uh, this one's strictly limited I want um, this. 
This is Drainus. You talked about this on uh, Happy Console Gamers channel. I did, I did, yeah. man. And I was, I was trying to pop up to get the game, and he did. He yeah, did, he, he did. I know. Up, yeah, because he did a follow up video. He's like, okay, I bought it, and yeah, <laughs> Reggie was right. <laughs> That game I, I, I just sucked me in, and I'm so happy I got the collector's edition because they were actually sold out of the regular edition, which I was going to get. Yeah, I've been went looking out, for it. Actually. Yeah, I went all out and got that and everything. So where did you get this? Tricky Limited. Oh, it is, oh, of course. Okay, yeah. God, is, okay, I'm not surprised. Huh. Wow, I want to get this. That's your copy. What? Really? Yeah, of course, dude. <laughs> dude, seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you already go, have man. a copy, I see. Yeah. Okay. I'm good to go, man. That's your copy. Oh, dude. Well, I'm glad I didn't find a copy then. Yeah. It's funny because, yeah, I saw that video. I was like, oh, man, I want to I get that game. Dude, I was. <laughs> it, it, it's rare for me to get pumped up to like, do a review on a game. But yeah. that game, I just I had to, man, because it was so. Just, it really pulled me in. It's, it's It definitely made it to one of my top five shooters of all time. And I know people are like, looking at me like I'm crazy, but yeah, it did. It hmm. just. The detail they put into this game, the story they put into it. I know you guys don't care about story usually when shooting up games. I do. Yeah. But I just think it's just it's just a really fun game to learn. And it's just it's really rewarding, I would say. So definitely um I would say try this one out if you get a chance. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh next up I'm gonna stay with kind of new stuff here. This is a game I did not play, but I watched somebody play it. So that is Hogwarts Legacy. Mm. Uh, for I, I got it for the Xbox Series X, and uh, the reason why I haven't played it is because I watched my wife play yeah. about eighty <laughs> hours of this game. Yeah. She Even basically insisted she's a huge Harry Potter fan, read the books, watched the movies. She's been to, to uh, Harry Potter World in Florida, whatever. Um, and I gotta say, this is an excellent RPG. Mm. It looks beautiful. It's massive. There's tons of stuff to do in this game. Um, it's just a, it's basically just kind of like an open world RPG where you get to play in that Harry Potter world. Well, they the thing they got the world down to a T, like how they how the world is. I mean, like there's places you see in the movies you could go to pretty yes. much, and they're just exactly. And just, it's cool too because it's uh, I believe it's a hundred years before the the books and the movies. Mm -hmm. And so what's cool is that it, it's kind of in its own little world. Uh, its own little time period, but also you meet up with people who are the ancestors of mm -hmm. the characters from the movies and the books. And so it's pretty, so even though it's, you, you know, you're not going to run into Harry Potter, but you do run into characters that will eventually affect that world. Right. It's pretty cool. And um, just watching her play it, the amount of detail in this game is, uh, I, I, I'm shocked it's the developer's first game because it's mm. like, we're talking like Skyrim level of detail in this game. It's I, believe, amazing. I believe it's their first game, right? Is yeah, I believe so. That's, that's, that's like they knocked impressive. out of the park. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, Hogwarts Legacy, Rebecca was like, you have to talk about this game. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's awesome. Right on. Next up is, man, lots of shooters in this video. So hmm. I hope you guys are happy. Uh, this is Bullet Soul Infinite, the collector's edition Bullet for Soul. a Switch. Hmm. Uh, I got lucky and got this um, because I totally forgot about that version. My buddy Kyle hooked me up with that copy of it, and um, I always wanted to get it on the 360, but it, the prices went up so high, I kind of forgot Bullet about it. Bullet Soul. Is yeah. it a Japanese only release on 360? Or? It is. It okay. is. But you can play it like on your... It's, it's, it's not region locked, thankfully, so yeah. pretty cool. But yeah, it's pretty much uh, two games in one. There's the first Bullet Soul, and then Bullet, Bullet Soul Infinite, I think the second one's called. But it's like a, more like an updated version, I would say. But still, it's very cool to have this, and it comes with a soundtrack and everything. So, a very good shooter, I would say. It's very, like... It seems like you're very overpowered in this game because your, your bullets, your lasers go all over the screen pretty much. So okay. like enemies that come on the screen, they get torn apart. I was I got to the third level without really like getting killed, but you know I think I was playing on default. I didn't play on easy, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. So definitely, if you're in the shooting modes, I would say you want to might want to pick this one up. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Uh, next up for me, two kind of like early prototypey sort of things in here. I just kind of lumped these two games together. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new Atari cartridges, a cartridge. Mm -hmm. So Atari for the the publisher for the first oh. time is, is putting out an, an, an Atari game. These covers matter. So. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So this it's my understanding that, that Mr. Run and Jump is, mm -hmm. it, you can get it on Steam, you can get it on Xbox or PlayStation. Mm -hmm. That is the full version of it, the full graphics. And then what they did is they, they de- made it kind of for the Atari because the Atari is so much simpler. But it's essentially a, a run and jump kind of, um, what do they call those games where you're trying to, to do it the fastest possible? Like a speed run game. Yes, uh, like that game uh, Celeste or whatever like that. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it actually plays similar or to Meat that. Boy, Meat Boy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just 
Yeah, just action games, I would say. Yeah, just basically platforming, okay. trying to survive, get to the end of the level. And I gotta tell you, this game is tough. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's like old school tough. And what's brutal about it is that if you fail, it takes you all the way back to the beginning oh, of see, the level. That is, that is, oh my God, dude, when that happens nowadays. I it's just... hard, it's tough. I know, it's really annoying. And um, I did play, you guys are gonna be able to see the, the, the footage here where I just kept over and over and over trying to do it, you know, it was because the the timing of the jump was brutal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool that you know atari is making a new cartridge for that people are excited for it yeah, um, very cool and then i was sent a prototype for a new game boy game called oh it's called uh kudzu k-u-d-z-u is that right yeah, yeah which i guess is basically a, a type of plant so it's a real plant mm -hmm. it's uh i believe it's japanese or something it's like a vine that takes over i, I love the i love the cover even though it's like a prototype yeah yeah so they sent me a prototype to kind of check it out but i want to mention it uh oh. i believe they're kickstarting this it is very much kind of like an earthbound sort of game where it's okay. like a uh you know it's a adventure rpg it's got a lot of humor to it i played it for a couple hours it seems pretty interesting so uh people are looking for new physical game boy games kind of if you like earthbound that sort of stuff check it out right on okay. yeah and it says prototypes i was like that i'm keeping that <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude okay um next up here our good friends at bitmap bureau uh one oh yeah. xeno crisis for the n64 dude these guys have done this game on every platform uh, almost, I mean, I don't know what's left at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's amazing. And the Japanese version, so it's pretty cool for N64. So, so I, they're, they're putting it all out there. They just announced the Super Nintendo one. I know. I mean, so. well, it, it is interesting how I'm surprised more companies don't do this. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about this game, but people are so passionate about it that they want to get it on every system, whether it's a Dreamcast mm -hmm. or Neo it, Geo. It's just a throwback because the game gets right to it. it I mean, obviously it's an arcade type yeah. game. It reminds us of Smash TV and games like that. Yep. So yep. for a game like this to come out and it's as well done as it is, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just so amazing and everything. So. I, I think I told you this that at some point I do want to do a video just about all the versions yeah. because it's so I don't think there's any game quite like it. That, that Here, here's two more. These. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> these are the ones I was probably missing. So now yeah, I can actually do that. Right on, man. That's hilarious. All right, in the Japanese version. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up for me, speaking of shooters, this is one I did not open because I don't need to because I play this game so damn much already, but. Uh, again, a limited run. This is another time when limited yes. run did a, a release. I was like, I yeah, must I own that. Well, you've been talking about that game to me for years. Cause well, this thing was on the PS3. I think you mentioned about top 10, top five shooters. This is up there for me. I mean, yeah. I, it's, it, it, it's definitely in my top 10. It's gotta be in my top five. You know what, it reminds me of Gunbird a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a good comparison. Yeah. So I played it a ton. And I was just so happy to get a, a physical version because I never thought it would happen because the mm. game's been out for a while. Right. You know? So, yeah, I was very... Oh, you have it too. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> so I, I set aside. <laughs> so you played it then? Oh, yeah, I played it. And you know, they just announced the PS4 version, which I, I would have preferred it on that system. But I was yeah. tempted to buy it again, but I was also like, do I really need to do that? Well, unless I mean, it has like online capabilities, then it's probably not really worth it yeah, on PS4. Yeah, that's true. It is a four-player game to let people know co-op. Yeah. If they get that game online, though, oh... Yeah, that's Excellent. cool. So, so, yeah, I was happy to pick up a copy of that. Cool, cool. Okay, um, next we have um, Grim Grimoire oh, okay. Once More uh, Collector's Edition. Which is, this is a like a remake or a remaster of the PS2 version. Yes, it right? is. Yeah, and okay. um, I remember playing that game back in the day. And I bought it because I, I love Vanilla World, where it's oh. art, how they do their art. Their art's everything. great. And um, Wow. I, it took me a while to get used to the gameplay, but the story is what kept me compelled to play it. And I got to that game. This game is so deep. Like the story starts off all friendly, but it gets like it gets pretty dark. I would say I was hmm. very shocked. So a lot of people were in for, for a surprise when they play this game. And um, once I saw that, I love that's the Japanese cover right there on the back. Okay. which looks better than the American one. So um, once I saw that, I said I had to get it. And playing it again just is so nostalgic. Man, I'm having a great time with it. So and it's good that a lot of people that didn't get to play the PS2 version originally will get to play this one now. You mm -hmm. know, because I feel like the game is more popular now. I yeah, say. I think so. so too. Yeah, you're right. Because I don't think it sold very well when it came out. Because no, nah, it came yeah. out like I think a month before Odin Sphere did too. Oh, you know, really? Yeah. Hmm. This game definitely got overlooked. I, I think so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, next up, uh, a newer game that came out that I had to pick oh, up, nice. Disney Illusion one. Island. So, this game is extremely good. 
Yeah. I sat down and played this for hours and hours when I first Really, I was kind of biased against it because the art, I was, I wanted to do the old school art style, but you know, if you're, yeah. you're saying it, it pulls you in, then I'm not oh, interested. Oh, dude, the gameplay in this, I think, is excellent. So it's okay. basically a 2D Metroidvania style game. I mean, in the truest sense, like where you can't get somewhere until you unlock, you know, an ability okay. or whatever. Um, and you mentioned the art style. So originally the art style does have that kind of flash animation style to it, but as you play it, you realize, no, it's, it's better than that, actually. And the music in this is really, really good. Oh. I would love to play a sample in, in this video, but I'd be afraid of getting a copyright claim. Yeah. But just trust me on this, the, the, I mean, the music is amazing. And also, too, I will say about this game, some people complain it's a little bit, a little bit easy. Um, in the beginning, it is absolutely. You'll cruise through it. But as you go along, it has a really nice difficulty curve. Okay. To where I think that for most people, you'll just have fun. You'll just have fun and, with it. And this it's game. one of four players. So. It is. And so, yeah, you'll you'll see when you start the game where you have four different characters. And you can choose if you want to be Mickey or Minnie or Donald Duck or Goofy. But okay. uh, then other people, I believe, can join in. I haven't tried it, though. But. I, 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 you convinced me. I think I'm going to pick this one up. Oh, dude, so. I, would, I would pick it up. Okay, I would definitely. definitely pick it up. It's highly recommended. Right on. Thank yeah. You. Okay, um... This is gonna be. Uh, it, this one's gonna be kind of strange uh, because I've actually talked about it on your channel before. Hmm. But this is a Snow Brothers uh, collector's oh. edition. Okay. I finally got this from Retrovit, and um, I had the regular edition before. Um, that I, I brought on the channel before, but I just wanted to show this one off because I thought it was pretty cool. Now I didn't open it because you know obviously Snow Brothers they look kind of like they need they look like they need to stay in there. I don't want to take out the body. They look pretty crazy. Well, if they're made so. of snow. They might get a little bit too warm and melt. <laughs> So, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I just, it's, it's just something really cool that I like, because I really like those games, so I'm pretty much uh, hmm. happy to have that. So I just want to show you guys. Okay. Uh, and an upgrade. An upgrade, yeah, an definitely. Upgrade. So cool. All right, uh, next up for me, I'm going to show these here. So, um, Evercade. Ah. The Evercade is the system that keeps on giving. Yeah, dude, their recent announcement was pretty awesome. I know I say this every time, but I mean, I think we were all, when the Evercade first came out, we're like, Interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, they're trying to bring physical cartridges, fully licensed games, color manuals, but is it going to succeed? And I think, I think, yes, it, it, obviously it has. And yeah. so they've, they've continued to release these. So these are four newer ones. Yes. Um, so um, just real quick, uh, yeah. I mean, they keep releasing compilations, which will be great, and also their own exclusive games, which is, I think that's a good thing too. And I think these are 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks. $20. And you so get a think, manual and everything. Manual and everything. So here we have the, the, the Toplin, as I had to yep. say that, RK2, right. uh, some classics in here. So like uh, Twin Cobra, Hellfire, uh, Twin Hawk, Fire Shark. These are all yes. amazing. Very cool. Um, Team 17, which I think is probably my favorite of these right here. This is PC types games right here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, or the Amiga. So, Amiga, um, Amiga, okay. Which which was the the system that they really preferred. Alien Breed, yep. Alien Breed is really good on here. Also, a, a 2D platforming game called Qu Quack or Quack or whatever. Which is this guy right here, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's a duck. <laughs> Dude, that's a really fun game. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's... it's it's really fun, really well done. So, okay. um, then they also have the Pico Collection Volume Three, wow. which is always really interesting. So they've got they get a physical version of Forty Winks on here. So that's a PlayStation and One they also version. Have a Radical Bikers, which I talked about on your channel before, the Game Boy Color version. Yes, I really yeah, I, I saw that on there, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay, this looks familiar. So again, just a really oh, and um, what's the other one? Super Bubble Pop mm. is a 3D version of Super Bubble or Bubble Bobble. Really? Yeah. So it's kind of got its. I mean, it's it's its own thing, but it's like 3D. It's really cool, actually. Okay. I, I was enjoying that a lot. And then they have the second collection of the Commodore 64, which is my my computer as a kid. And so there's some classic Pit games stop, on here. California games. Mm -hmm. Yes. W Winter games on here. They've also got uh, what else? We got here uh, Fire Lord on here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just a bunch of classic Commodore it's, 64 games. They continue games. to put a smile on our faces. These releases, man. And it's amazing how this one device, or actually they have two devices, they have the console and they have a handheld, will run computer games, uh, console mm -hmm. games, arcade games, and they, they don't, they'll just mix them up. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the Metal Gear Solid series, and they released, oh, I talked about this one on your channel before, this was, I had the Vita version, but now, thanks to Video Games New York Soft, um, I have the PS4 version and the Switch version of Unmetal. 
you know, which is a, it's, it, you could tell it's a spoof of the Metal Gear Solid games. It's uh -huh. so funny. Oh, yeah. And the gameplay it just is the same. Yeah. But you have a narrator kind of like telling tell about what happened in the past. And yeah. you're like going through and it's so freaking funny. I love So this uh, is for the Switch and the PS4. Okay. Yeah, Switch and PS4. Um, but it originally was on the, the Vita, hmm. you know, uh, as a physical. But thank goodness yeah. it came out on these systems. Yeah. It's more modern, I would say. But definitely happy to have these. Um, Man, this is a lot of fun. You're seeing the gameplay here, so um, definitely that sneak action and espionage yeah. and all that good stuff. So very cool. It's funny you mentioned that. So we don't oh, plan these. One thing I do want to say though, oh, okay, people are trying to get that game off eBay, but it's it's available at the Video Games New York Soft website. So don't go huh. to eBay first because you're gonna pay more. I mean, they have like a bunch in stock at their stores. So if you want that copy of the game, it's funny you mentioned that because um, I knew I wanted it too. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Vita version here. This is, is uh, East Asia Soft released this. Right. Dude, I played this for the first time to capture this footage. Yeah. It is so funny. It's it is. hilarious. It is, game. dude. It, it, it cracked me up, dude. <laughs> yeah. Shocked. It, it, I mean, it basically, I, I, can't, I, I can't play some of it because it'll look, some of it's actually kind of adult, yeah. which is really hilarious. But yeah, it's absolutely a spoof of Metal, Metal Gear. Well, the scene with the guy in the bathroom was one of the most hilarious scenes. Yes, when he did. wants a toilet paper. Yeah. Hey, buddy, I have no paper. Can you bring me some? Here you are. Thanks, man. You saved my ass, literally. What the f***? What sort of paper is this? It's only one ply, unscented, and unpatterned. It's the kind the prisoners use. F that's why their hands stink so much. <laughs> and what's really, this is another thing that's really funny about this game, is that occasionally you'll, you'll come, essentially the, the, the whole game is a guy looking back on his, he's trying to tell a story of what happened to him, right? right. But it's really funny because you'll come up to a, a point in the story where it'll ask you, like, you know, uh, what happened next in the story? You'd be like, well, I ran into one or two guards or mm -hmm. whatever. You'll have a choice. And you, got a choice yeah. and you think there'd be some sort of like, like, why would you choose two guards? Yeah. So I played it twice to see exactly mm -hmm. what it, there is. You, of course you would choose only one guard, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? but easier. you could totally screw yourself and not even know it. Right. Yeah. Like one, there was one part where I walked in and he, there was a guard and you have a choice whether the, the, the guard like is like sees you or is he sleeping? Yes. I, of course I told him to I be did, asleep. Yeah. Well, like he's going to be asleep. Yeah. And he was asleep. I was like, yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah, and it's funny how it's like they kind of like spoofed themselves because like they call the main character Jesse Fox. You know, it's called obviously like Foxhound. And yeah, like, you know, it's, just, it's, it's hilarious. It's great. So, so I also got uh, a couple other Vita games I just want to show real, real quick here. Yeah. Uh, Scourge Bringer, which is a um, that's like a roguelike 2D kind of combat uh, platforming mm -hmm. game. Uh, really fun game, actually. Enjoyed that quite a bit. And then I picked up Brotherhood United. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. So this is kind of like a indie version of uh, Metal Slug. Really? Okay. Dude, and it's fun. Really? It's really fun, yeah. It's nice because it's it's a, it's not as hard as Metal Slug. I mean, Metal Slug's mm -hmm. not really that difficult, but this is definitely a little bit kind of dialed down from that. Okay. So you can kind of play through it in like, in, you know, a couple hours, I would assume. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very much like that where you, you get in vehicles and you're going and, you know, mm -hmm. shooting a bunch of dudes. It's really fun. So, you know, seeing this, the, these games it reminds me how like Play Asia like helped the Vita stay alive with these releases. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think these are even still for sale on their site. So, okay. yeah, it's pretty cool. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I haven't looked at The Vita, the Vita wow. collectors are serious business, man. <laughs> <laughs> buy all, all that stuff. Yeah. Right on, man. Okay. All right. So uh, next game here is a, one of the most hilarious games I've ever played. A lot, I, I hope a lot of you know, but I do like FMV type games, and they're done <laughs> so well these days. But this is an old one that got uh, released that was um, canned. This is American Hero, and what I. The heck? <laughs> this game was first, was going to come up with the Atari Jaguar back in the day, and um, <laughs> a full motion game on the Atari Jaguar CD probably. Yeah, CD okay. part, Yeah, yeah, of huh. course, yeah. But um, of course, uh, it didn't do well, so the game got canned. But um, it got leaked on the internet a couple years back, and they started to kind of put the game back together. And they even brought the uh, the, the 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 main the main actor back to kind of voice some of the parts in the game to kind of help it its new release. Huh. But the game's hilarious. It's 
the story is all over the place, so I'm not going to go into it. But the choices you can make in this game are great, man. I mean, seriously, like, they'll give you two choices. If you don't make the choice in time, you'll get a third choice, which happened to me. And there's a scene where I, I left the bar and this truck tried to run me down in the alley. It's so, it so crazy and hilarious. It's like over the top fun. It's just like your own action movie, pretty much. And you're pretty much like directing how it goes. It's, it's great. So, American Hero. I've noticed that Limited Run over the years has put out a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Like th somebody at Limited Run loves these cheesy FMV games. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Which is good for us. <laughs> yes, definitely. So yeah. Right okay. Here. All right. All right. Next up for me, um, I was hoping you would help me with this one. So Ooh. this is this is the Valis Collection here. Yes. And uh, this is by Retrobit. Mm-hmm. And pretty much, uh, if you haven't played the Valis games, they are platform games. Yes. Um, I was bitching to him because I'm like. Dude, these games are really hard because I'm trying to capture the footage. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, man, these games are really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, I, I'm assuming you started with the first game. Yes. And, um, yeah, it's it's pretty tough. Well, yeah. I think it's because the the movement of the character. It just seems like I, I, every once in a while I was kind of like jumping. Like I wasn't landing my jumps or jumping right. I was falling. As you know, the enemies are coming. I was like, oh mm -hmm. my god, it was so frustrating. Yeah, to keep responding. The third game is really where things kind of balance out at. That's, That's my favorite what I one too. Yeah. Um, but um, they are they are old school platform games. They originally came out on the Turbo Graphics PC Engine. Yeah. I, those versions are really good, but I love how Retrobit did these. Yeah, like, this and that, that's a, why I have it. Right, total awesome re-release of how they did these games. Like man, again, fully licensed, putting out you know brand new mm -hmm. Genesis cartridges, and I love yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, and they, and they have reversible covers. So if you want the original yep. covers, like yeah, you got them on Genesis, you, you got that option as well. One hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, very cool collection here that you know is for the hardcore fans yeah. and people who are better at platformers than I. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Here we go. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, my next item. Gonna, well, here, here's another gift for you, man. So. Um, okay. Our friends at um, Premium Edition Games um, have a soundtrack done for them, and the soundtrack was done, I believe, by my buddy this. Fabricio, and Fabricio put this together, and um, he wanted you to have this. You know, Very cool. Some tracks. Vinyl. So you got the vinyl and the CD, but I know you're gonna open up the vinyl. Oh yeah, I am actually. Yeah. <laughs> So very cool. Have you, you kept up with the premium edition games before, right? Like, yeah, you know, premium edition games is, is a. They are always at some of these retro gaming expos. Mm -hmm. They usually have a, a, a table set up, yep. a bunch of really cool stuff there. They do some amazing special editions of, of mm -hmm. games, stuff I've never heard of sometimes, and yeah. there's really cool stuff. So this yeah, is and, awesome. And they're usually known for Switch games, but now they're 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 doing PS4 games and PS5 games, which is really cool. Huh. So they're expanding. Okay, that's a um, cool cover. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up for me, something completely different here. Um, for the, for the Xbox 360 is a game called Nailed. I heard of this game. Before. Yeah, it's a game that didn't probably sell very well. It came out during the 360, and I think it probably got lost. However, it is a really fun arcade racing game. Really, completely over the top. There is no logic or physics to this whatsoever. Is this arcade fun? Arcade fun. It's by Techland, which yeah, makes... they, they 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 made the um, Dead Island game. I believe. And Dying, I Dying, Dying Light, I think is Dying what... Light as well. Yeah. yeah. Right so on, so yeah. this is this is made by a developer who knows their stuff and for whatever reason this game just never caught on it's super cheap like it's one of those games where you can usually I'm pick up this. yeah and it's fun it's, it's only available on, on 360 i believe it's also on the, the ps3 okay and i've i played actually on, on my steam deck so mm. you can get on steam again usually on sale for super cheap so uh just a completely over the top arcade racing game massive jumps like you just fly through the air uh you know big combos things like that so good stuff all right, next up for me is something a little bit different. I want to ask you, like, growing up, did you have, like, an old, like, gateway computer or, like, compact Rosario or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so we had an IBM computer. Um, it was um, it was a weird computer because the, the, it had the hard drive on the bottom, but the, the computer screen kind of looked up at you, which had, like, an angle. Of, I got it back Whoa. in, like, 1990. Okay. Um, like yeah, I was like like uh, I can't remember how old I was. That. That's weird. Yeah, it, it was a weird, it was a weird looking computer, but uh, huh. it played games on it. So um, it, it, the best games I could play on there was stuff like maybe Stellar Seven, uh, Firehawk, uh, Oil's Well. Oh um, okay. I didn't play any high end games on it like yeah, that, yeah, but sure. I did play like games like uh, I think that game's called D on the uh, PC where the guy wakes up and there's like a like there's an alien in his head. What was that oh. game called? I played that game on it. Well, the reason why I'm asking this is so you have experience kind of like owning computers. And you know how mm -hmm. like, like especially PCs back in the day, they would have like, you know, like a little sticker on it that would say like Intel inside or, mm -hmm. you know, or 
later on during the 90s, it would, it would be like, you better be Y2K compliant or whatever, you know? <laughs> so the reason why I mention that is that a guy sells these. These are old school stickers that you can put on new computers oh, really? to make them look old. Wow. <laughs> Check this out, dude. So he's got like a, a Cyberdyne sticker that you could put on like and again you know to, yeah umbrella, nice. the umbrella corporation but he's also got like the you know like uh oh yeah retro inside mm -hmm. so remember when they would come with like 3d fx voodoo like stickers wow, yep. or mm -hmm. sound blaster sound blasters well that's probably the one oh yeah the most you probably videos. did so i thought these were pretty cool like yeah. i could see me putting on this on my my you know my mac or something like yeah, that definitely, you know? man. and they're so they're super cheap he sells them on his website I thought these were pretty neat, and they're they're definitely kind of America Online. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it come with like an America Online. Five hundred hours included. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what these are the ones that cracked me up because I remember seeing like Best Buy when you would buy a computer, it would re, it would tell you to remember to turn your computer off at you know at yeah, midnight yeah. just in case of Y two K. Wow, isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, that is funny, dude. Wow. So, anyways, uh, he just sent this to me. I thought these were super cool. I guess he's got like a twenty percent off if people want to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't get paid for it or anything like that, but I thought they were super cool. So okay. definitely check it out. Right yeah, I'm gonna put, put those on my computers. Next here is a pretty unique one. So, in order to play these games, just let everybody know if you decide to pick these up, you have to have a modded PS One to play these. But um, hmm. uh, my buddy, my Project Retro Games made a physical release of Resident Evil Zero uh, and Dude, Resident Evil 1.5. He made them in a long box. Now these games are available for free to play, but I obviously wanted the physical, so he made it physical. And um, that looks really good. This Resident Evil Zero is this demake pretty much. Yeah, this shows how Resident Evil Zero would have looked if it was on on that platform, which is insane. So huh. uh, very fun. Uh, I think a lot of people would like this. And um, of course, Resident this is the one, one that starts off with the train, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because when you go to the part, you one of the most amazing scenes in the on the trains when you're on top of it when yes. it's raining. Yeah, yeah. That that scene in this game is like a still. Oh, so it's funny because they couldn't, you know, obviously yeah, the, the PS1 do couldn't do it. Yeah, um, but uh, it, it's just really cool that how they put this game together, and it's just I don't know, man. For me, the PlayStation One system is one of my favorite systems of all time, so getting something like this oh, yeah. now is amazing. So the modders did a really good job putting this together. I'm really happy. And then, of course, Resident One Point Five, which I talked about yeah. before, very cool. So yeah. Wow, you get the craziest stuff, dude. <laughs> All right, next up for me is a game that was released by Super Rare. It's yes. called Wave Tail. Dude, I have, man. So okay. this game is, surprise me. Mm -hmm. This game surprised me. So it's a 3D adventure platforming game. So and the whole premise is, is that you are this girl, and for whatever reason, she looks down in the water. It's like a water kind of world, and she sees her reflection come up. And so when she touches her foot down, the, the shadow comes up and supports her. And so mm. she can suddenly walk on water or glide on water. And so mm -hmm. a big part of this game is kind of gliding around on waves and water going from it's a little... Beautiful. Yeah, going from a little island to a little island, solving quests, battling some of the, the, the enemies out there, um, you know, talking to NPCs and stuff like that. Really high quality game. Completely surprised me. It's cool I got a physical release because this is an example of a game that... Maybe in, you know a lot of people you know pass by or whatever and could be lost. Super rare time. is really good at uh, like picking up games that probably people would like pass over as digital. Like I, as, I have to say, accident. yeah, and th that super rare does a really good job most of the time picking games that I think are worth. Yeah, you know, a for. yeah, a hundred percent. So this is one that I, I played, loved it. So really fun. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, man, been wanting to talk about this game for a while. This is. Trinity Trigger oh, for the PS4. So um, I picked this game up immediately because it reminded me of games like Secret of Mana. You know, um, the game really gets into, I mean, it has a story and everything like that, but it really gets to the action pretty fast, which is good for me. And um, I, it's just one of those games that really will pull people in, I think. You know, it just, it just reminds me of like Secret of Mana or a top down Zelda game, which is a lot of fun. You go to these different dungeons, you meet, you, you have up to three characters and everything like that. And it's just, I don't know, there's something nostalgic about this game that I think a lot of people will like if they try it out. I like this so, box. Yeah, that was, that was just a regular day one edition for like 60 bucks. When it came I mean, out. this is like a really solid box here. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. They're making, they're making these boxes sturdy now. To last, that's cool. <laughs> Definitely. So it was a game that really pulled me in. I, I'm very happy with it. So I think a lot of people will like this one if they try it out. So it's oh. also available on Switch too. So. Huh, okay. All right, uh, next up for me is a 2D platforming game called 
Islets. And essentially what this is, is a Metroidvania style game. Um, but again, and there's a lot of those kind of games, but this is one I think is worth talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like really well made. Um, the way that it gives you your upgrades and your powers mm -hmm. really helps kind of, you know, get you to the next part of the, of, uh, I mean, in many ways, this is very much Metroidvania, right. or, you know, Metroid, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, where it has even the map that, is, that tells you where to go and, and uh, where you've been and stuff like that. But it controls extremely well. Um, if you fail, it's because of something you did, okay. and, and it's not because the game is cheap. And it's just a super fun game. And I was, again, really impressed by this. So this is another super rare where, again, they chose the right one to put a physical out, the yeah. right game, you know? Good stuff, man. Yeah, it's cool. But here, I, I thought I showed this on the channel before, but I, I look back at the videos I didn't. Here mm -hmm. is The Last Blade Part 2. Uh, this is from Pix and Love. And um, Last Blade Part 2, one of my favorite fighting games of all time. And I, yeah, I put it in this crazy box and everything like that, but it, it comes in like those, as you can see, the Neo Geo Snap box. Yeah. Right? And um, man, it's such a, a good fighting game. It's so well, it's so balanced, I would say. It's a, a good game a lot of people can get into. Hmm. And I had to go all out for it, you know, because. Um, I don't think they'll ever make a sequel to it. I would love for them to, but uh, in a, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But um, Have you done a video of kind of like your top, maybe I've asked you this before, like your top five or ten old school fighting games like of this era? You know I, I mean? did one uh, years ago, like barely when I like knew how to do YouTube yeah. videos. I did like a top ten or thirty or something. I went all out in the video. Oh, okay. It's like you could tell I did it on my phone, so it's like, oh. <laughs> I should do another one, though. And maybe you I'll should, because I'd like it. to watch it. Because okay, I, definitely. It, it'd be interesting to know. Um, speaking of which, be, the reason why I ask is because occasionally, you know, I don't buy a lot of fighting games, mm -hmm. but I did pick up the JoJo's. Uh, that um, one was fun. I remember you were happy when you, yeah, you talked about it. Yeah, I mean, I was going to show it in this video, but like, well, we already talked about it. But mm -hmm. dude, that is, that's a crazy fun mm -hmm. game. So very cinematic with the moves yes. you pull off in that game. You just, it's it's a blast. So. Yeah. All right, very cool. I am down to my last thing. So. And um, yeah, I have one more item as well. Okay. Well, I mentioned that I've been looking for, I mean, I'm always looking for certain consoles. And one of them that I've been wanting since it was originally announced is the Cyberpunk 2077 Xbox mm -hmm. console. So there's that. And you would think this would be fairly easy to find because when Cyberpunk came out, you know, it wasn't exactly received very well. But as most people know, over time, CD Projekt Red has really fixed the game, mm -hmm. put a lot of love into it, and and also with the Netflix series, suddenly Cyberpunk, you know, seventy seven is really really popular. So I got this complete in the box at Pink Gorilla. I walked in there and I was like, oh my god, you finally have it because I've been trying to buy it mm -hmm. and they're just crazy expensive. And so I, dude, that's awesome. Dude. I got, I, I'm impressed with that, dude. That's. They did a really good job on the special edition. The, the, the so were they were they like really like limited when they first came out? Yeah, because I couldn't buy one because wow. I, I tried and, it, and it, they sold out. And so I was like, well, I'll just probably pick it up on the secondary market. And I wanted it complete because a lot of and it was hard to get. Actually, I went back and forth with people online to try to get one in the box. With mm. and they wouldn't have the controller or be beat up or whatever. Mm. So finally, one day a couple of weeks ago, I walked into Pink Gorilla. I was like, it was like that moment, like. It, everything kind of got small. I was like, oh my God, oh my God there it is. You know? there. Right and me. what was great actually is that uh, Cody and Pink Gorilla didn't charge me eBay prices. Like the, the price on the box was a little bit less than what it was online. Oh, so that was pretty cool. So I'm very happy to get it. The irony is this is not a good system to play the game on. <laughs> that, that is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. I mean, people will kind of make fun of me in the comments because of that reason. But I still wanted it because I like the game. Right. So. Okay. All right. My last item is very unique. Um, this is. Um, it looks like a PC game. I know, right? This is mm -hmm. from Picks and Love as well. And this is Nefasto's Misadventures. And um, the game huh. is pretty weird because you pretty much play as a video game character that something goes wrong in the video game. So you're in the game trying to fix the game you're kind of learning about how games work and everything and how coding works it's not so technical like that it has its own little story going on to it but it's like you just talk to characters and figure out like it's it's, it's really unique it's like a, huh. almost like a point and click game in a way but um it's very unique to look at because you're kind of seeing how stuff go what goes on in video games i would say hmm. and uh the cover for it you know that that cover is pretty pretty epic and but, this box again looks like a, a big box pc but when you, when you open it up here because I, I i did the reverse cover for it because i like the reverse cover better get it out of here real fast 
reverse so, cover. But this cover right here, I, I feel like that cover is, is, oh, is more of my style. But that's how the game really looks right here. Oh, it, so, oh okay. Yeah. Interesting. So kind of almost like anime. Because this cover will throw you off. I mean, yeah. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that looks like a yeah, like a total like yeah. old school PC game. <laughs> Crazy! I never yeah, heard of it this has a, that little advertising stuff that comes with it, and this, it was a really cool release that they put out. I was Dang, very shocked with that one. That's so. wild. Yeah, it's amazing how many games. Like you and I pay attention to games, mm -hmm. and there's always something that we have not heard of. Yeah, yeah what's that about? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You know, it's crazy, all right? So it looks like that, dude. That's pretty much it, man. Another I know. Video. Knocked out for but you guys. You know what? We're not done yet because we are going to do a second pickups video uh, that will be coming soon. Yes. So more to come. Yeah, a few more things laying around here. So, so dude, see. where can people find you on the internet? Because I know you're marching towards 100,000 oh, yeah, subscribers. Yeah. Dude, I'm like a thousand away. It's so weird. Like, thinking about, so yeah, Radical Reggie, the radical one. Yeah. You want to help me get to 100,000? I usually don't ask for it, but hey, I'm now pumped up. So hopefully I'll get to 100,000. I'll be good to go. Heck yeah. So help awesome. me out. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Hey, guys. Metal. Sorry. Did you, did you just burp? No, I did. I thought I was going to start off. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I thought you burped. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was going to be really impressed by. <laughs> like you can burp on command. I was going to attempt to try and see if I had any. But if you want to go, it's totally. No, no, no. Dude, okay, by all means. Go for it.